Hi there, um, I'm Don Marie Elder from Scipio, and welcome to today's session. We are on week three of our five part series of Thrive. So, Thrive are pillars designed to help guide and steer your marketing efforts in bringing voice into your customer base. There's five sessions that run every Thursday throughout the month of June. If you missed the last couple, um, they've been recorded, transcribed, and uh, you can find them either from our follow-up email, through our LinkedIn, um, our LinkedIn posts, or go to our website. But the sessions really are designed to focus across the entire lifespan of how you are attracting, interacting, transacting, activating, and then attaching for uh, your customers to engage with them over the, over the life of your journey. So today, um, each week I bring an expert from my team and today's expert is going to be Fred uh, Stutchberry. And the reason that we're bringing in experts from Scipio is because most of these experts are recent hires. As we've grown and expanded our business, we have heavily recruited from mm -hmm. industry based on experiences, knowledge, and success in certain respective areas that we wanted to round the, the, the table out. So today I'm asking um, Ted to join me on stage and we're going to discuss the importance of the transaction process with your customers and how to shorten your time to revenue and their time to value. So welcome, Ted. Thank you, Don Marie. Uh, appreciate that. Um, so hi, uh, my name is uh, Ted Stutchbury. Um, and uh, welcome, welcome to the transact yeah. session. Yeah, so Ted has a degree in computer science and mathematics. He's also been a software developer and um, has done product management and has moved over into sales and delivery. And one of the things that's interesting, Ted, when we were prepping for this is I saw that our paths are, are pretty similar because I started as a program programmer way back in the day before moving into to channels. Now all these young kids today, they have um, chat, GPT, and all those other programs to do the programming for them, whereas mm -hmm. we didn't have that <laughs> way, way back when. So one of the great things about Ted, um, we're very fortunate as I listened to him on our partner and customer engagements. He is just a fantastic listener, loves to get feedback. Um, he came to us recently, by the way, of Ribbon and Candy. And he also did a stint at Amazon where, if you know Amazon, they are really known for customer obsession. Um, I love that term, customer obsession. I hope that Jeff Bezos doesn't mind if we might might borrow it a little bit. And we really brought Ted in because he just loves being um, in front of customers and, and partners and carriers. So Ted, you're gonna talk about Transact today. So I'm gonna turn the, uh, the mic or the floor over to you and super excited to see um, your your approach um, and how you're going to master the art of conversion with our partners. All right. Well, again, thank you, Don Marie. Um, so, as mentioned, uh, my name is Ted Stutchery. I'm now uh, I'm I'm here with uh, with Scipio as the uh, the director of our cloud communications team for pre and post sales. So, again, welcome to our transact session um, of this Thrive series of webcasts. Um, you know, previously we've talked about uh, we, we've had sessions on on how to attract customers and, and the best practices of interacting with your customers. And today it's really about the transaction between yourselves and uh, your current and uh, potential customers. Really, why is there a hesitation in in some of that transaction? How can you remove the barriers of that uh, that, that that's causing that hesitation? And how can you make it just seamless and, and easy to um, for your customers to work with you? Right. Um, so telecom has a perception, right? Telecom is scary, right? How many enterprises out there uh, or SMBs out there work in the telecom field? It's a, it's a very small number, right? So voice communications becomes a necessity. It's a cost of business, right? And it's it's historically been uh, quite complex. It's been expensive and, and it's been slow to roll out. Um, typically it's required a lot of internal expertise. Um, if you don't have the internal expertise, you've got to outsource that expertise. And likely it's been outsourced to um, to partners like yourselves, right? Um, but but because of that complexity, you know, quotes are complex and they're slow, right? So when you're doing the quoting process as part of the transactions, you know, you've got to go through, well, what are all the hardware pieces you require, right? What's the software licensing? What is the maintenance, what does the maintenance cover? Um, is there any guaranteed um, 
reliability or resiliency in this in this quote that you're getting. What happens when things fail, right? And of course, what's missing? You get these complex quotes, and and you've got to be an expert on the overall system to know even what's not in the quote, right? So that's that's been a challenge. Um, telecom's also been expensive. So you know, just going through the list of of what I provided earlier, right? You see that that it can be pricey, and of course, these all require space. They all, all require wiring uh, for any kind of on-premise equipment, and of course, they all rely on expensive maintenance contracts. And of course, based on all this stuff, telecom becomes slow to roll out, right? So you got to ship equipment, you got to find space for that equipment, you got to schedule the experts to install the equipment, schedule experts to network and program the equipment place phones, look at wiring, uh, make sure the wiring's up to date, right? So historically, this has been provided by partners and, and it's been challenging and customers see this as challenging and they, they their heads explode every time they got to change it. But, you know, to quote Bob Dylan, the times are changing, right? So while it's been the way for generations and it has been generations, right? There's been a shift that's been taking place over the last, uh, over the last um, I'd say, 10 to 15 years to just remove the communications closets from the enterprise, right? And of course, you guys are here because you want to be part of that shift. You probably are part of that shift already, right? But cloud communications have come on to really solve the woes of the CIO, right? And so while, again, cloud communications has come in to, to, to solve that, that next stage of simplification is upon us, right? The majority of customers uh, we have now all have Microsoft Office 365 or Zoom for meetings, right? Both of those platforms, both of those companies make it super easy to turn on full unified communications. Simple config changes uh, in their admin centers can turn on the software features in a platform the customers are already using. So once those, basically the switches are, are flipped, Microsoft Teams calling is turned on, Zoom phone is turned on, the learning curve is becoming super flat. Super flat. Yeah, it's like a feature rather than a whole phone system that we had to deal with back in our our earlier career days, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And it, you know that that now with the features turned on, there's no need for these communications clauses, right? I mean, the you know you're removing all that PBX key systems, all those all that complexity out of the whole communications plan, right? So if you're a partner that's selling uh, hardware and maintenance contracts or even just you know, adding to UC, um, what options are there out for you when, when looking at this, right? So A, you can maintain the status quo. You've built up a clientele. They trust you and you've made a name for yourself. But what have you done to remove the per perception of being slow and complex, right? Um, when, you, when, you've, when customers come and visit your website, what do they learn? How quickly can they transact with you? Um, you know, what did, did they just get a web form to fill in? Um, basically saying, I'll get back to you. I think you got to go to the next slide, Aaron. Um, and how long do customers wait? Uh, what are they doing while they're waiting, right? Um, chances are they are uh, out looking at, at others as well, right? And of course, if you've got a web form that customers are filling in, um, are you scaled, right? Do you actually have to have um, salespeople and engineers look at every single SMB that, that comes to your website, right? And if the SMB that comes to your website could self-serve, would they, right? Guaranteed that, that there's a lot of them out there that just want to sign up, get their service and be done, right? So, so, and of course, if you could have a slice of just simple recurring revenue business that where, where there's not a lot of transaction, are not a lot of sorry, not a lot of uh, back and forth between you and, and the customer. They just sign up and go. Right, you'd want that business, right? Um, that's that's just nice, simple, recurring revenue business. So, as Dom mentioned, right, I did take a sabbatical over at Amazon to work on the AWS Commerce platform, right? And and again, as mentioned, like there's leadership principles um, at uh, at um, Amazon that drive. Uh, business decisions, they're revered. They're really what they look to, to make uh, decisions on, on how they do their business. And the very first leadership, the very first leadership principle is that leaders are customers of, customer obsessed, right? If you take care of your customers, everything else will fall into place. And again, and again that doesn't mean you have to be the cheapest, 
fastest or strongest, right? But it does mean you know what the customers want, you empathize with the customers, and you can deliver on their vision. Yeah. And I would say Scipio is that, but we're probably not as on the nose of talking about it. So you're going to see some changes um, coming later this summer as we revamp some of the marketing materials that we provide to you. Because when you look at our application that we deliver to market, it is almost completely based on the feedback that either you, the partner, you, the carrier, or your customer has provided to you to drive the direction of, of the R and D in the, in the roadmap. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, you know, that's one of the reasons I love being here with Scipio is because of that vision, that, that really customer focused customer uh, looking at, uh, looking at what the partners need, looking at what the customers need and, and delivering on that. Right. So, so in that, in that vein, you know, one of the things that Amazon did was they, they basically took on-premise storage um, and, and computing and made a way for customers to easily procure and consume that from the cloud. If you wanted off the truck, it was there. You know how much it costs. You know, um, you basically put your credit card down and the service is yours. Turned on immediately and you can start using it. Um, but, but, but don't think for a minute, there's not a whole sales and engineering team that's ready to jump in and help an enterprise re um, reach its, its full potential. Right. Of course there is. And, and, and if a um, enterprise needed it, they were there to do that. And that's where cloud uh, telecom is going. Cloud communications is going right. Make a simple and easy transaction. If you want something that's off the truck, automate, automate, automate. Right. If somebody needs a bit more, um, you know, the customer will have confidence that you are there and have the expertise to help them out. Right. And, and so today's cloud call, calling is not telecom, right? You've got the old historically perceived complexity, right? It's not that, right? It's all about thinking differently about your communications. It's now being simple, reliable, efficient. Flip a switch and turn on voice communications and the software that you're already using on the desktop and mobile, right? So what are you doing to let your customers consume uh, these cloud calling services? Right? Does your web page inform your customers of all the great things you've done? Um, but does it actually let your customers see their pricing? Does it actually let them order services directly? Right? And I know that's a you know a lot of people are like ah don't 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 let them see that. But but it's 2023. Why not? Right? I mean again, if you want to make this simple, you want to just get things moving forward. That's the things you need. You need automation for your quotes. You need simple consuming of the teams calling Zoom phone, making that available. Right, and this is where you work with your vendors to integrate the marketing. You integrate the web pages and process. You integrate the automation, right? And you set this up so that you can you can work with your customers, and they can just consume your services. They can come in, place a card down, consume your services, right? You remove the need for the callbacks for the simple and straightforward, right? Allowing you to concentrate on the more complex parts of your business, letting your business grow, right? And of course, what about trials, right? Trials are important. They're not always necessary, but they are a great way to show off the simplification of your communication environment, right? And short trials um, really show how easy it is to work with you. Of course, anyone can do it. So what makes you so special about your trials? Well, you set them up to be simple, easy to procure, easy to manage, right? You take examples of Amazon Prime, Netflix, um, even Microsoft Teams and Zoom. They all provide free Try before you buy capabilities, right? And, and great trials are just simple to consume, right? They're simple to evaluate uh, the capabilities and they're used, right? And there's no reason why um, Teams Calling and Zoom Phone can't have those capabilities in your trials as well. And of course, with trials, customers get to know about you, get to know your, your capabilities. But of course, any successful trial uh, has to have clear guardrails and clearly defined outcomes, right? And again, this is where you can help your customer by providing simple test plans, simple just guidance as to what a, a trial consumes. That doesn't mean a conversation with every time, but it does mean you've got the information that the customer can consume and that they know and can trust that you've got the service that they want. So, and of course, if any customers have questions, you're there to, to jump in and really, really help them. And the big thing about trials is, is they're real, right? 
So when it when they're done, customers should just be uh, now a, a paying customer and ordering more services from you. So those are the great things about it. So if you've done this right, right, you've changed the tone from from scary telecom to really simple cloud communications, right? You've shown them that yeah, cloud calling um, transactions can be simple, they can be automated, and they can be transparent. And that'll be the key for customers just, just not hesitating and working with you. And, and your automation and simplification on the, quad, the quoting, trials and activations can make all the difference for your customers. Again, that removes hesitation uh, from your customers when they're considering to jump to your services. So that, that from my perspective is, is you know, where I've been looking at the transaction services these days. Um, so uh, Don Marie, I guess. That, yeah, that's that's great. great. So I have a few questions um, for you. Sure. Obviously trials are very important to our business. Um, and when you're putting yourself in the, in the mindset of a carrier and a partner, um, when they're thinking about a trial, do you think that they understand a realistic time frame, or do you have some, you know, guidance or advice that you would give on a real, on what a realistic time frame is? Because sometimes I hear like 90 days or 120 days, and that that puzzles me because at the end of the day, we've simplified everything in its dial tone. Yeah. So I don't know why you need to test dial tone for 90 or 120 days. <laughs> You're absolutely, you're absolutely right, right? And if, um, you know, most trials, you know, we, we give trials for 30 days, right? Most trials don't even need the 30 days to, to really validate the capabilities of the trial, right? And because, because, you know, they're going to be too validated. They're going to be validating uh, features of, of Microsoft or Zoom. They're going to be validating the ins and outs. Um, but if they've got if they've got a decent test plan, if they've got a a clear and concise guardrails as, as to what they're trialing, it does not take you know thirty days, right? So so part of that is if if customers are coming to you asking for sixty day trial, ninety day trial, mm -hmm. um, you do have to sit down and ask why, right? What is what what are you doing over sixty ninety days that you can't do in thirty? Um, a lot of times it's just the decision processes are that far out and, and they're just, well, let's just get in here. And, and again, there's not clear guardrails and there's not clear outcomes. And without that, you know, you'll just have a trial that goes on and on and on and on. Right. Indefinitely or yeah. with, with no decision. So we no have um, we have test plans that you can utilize with your uh, customers. You can reach out to Rob Coker or um, Patrick Bell to get a copy of those. We'll also make sure one goes into the marketing in a box um, marketing hub so that you can have that um, as well. But besides a test plan, Ted, is there any advice that you might give on just how to avoid scope creep? Uh, yeah, again, again, it's, it's, it's laying out the, the guardrails, right? So, so with the trials for, for the, you know, connecting up for Teams phone, right? A lot of that is around, a lot of that is around testing your your connectivity to the PSTN, making sure you can make international calls, making sure you can call forward and things like that. Again, those get fit into uh, into a test plan. Um, but you do need to make sure that that the customer is not, you know, basically trialing Office 365, right? Or or trialing um, all of Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. When when they're doing a trial with you, right? You're you're a a subset of that and and you want to make sure that you're just kind of limiting that scope to okay well here's the things i'm working with with you now again right if the customer is doing all of that work they will need a larger test plan but there certainly should be uh, a test plan that you can work with and then just just get check check marks right we're done this done this done this done this our trial bit is over yeah that that's a really good point because i could imagine that sometimes customers may not fully understand the breadth of the capabilities and the collaboration platform that they have. 
So making sure that you're narrowing that focus or you're at least going into it eyes wide open that they don't understand the SharePoint or they don't understand the instant messaging uh, is yeah. good to, to put those guardrails down. So next for the people that joined us today or are listening to this over um, the next couple of days, we're going to give you a sneak peek into something that we're doing. So Ted, I'm gonna have you join me in announcing our 100 days of summer program. So what we're looking for is each partner and carrier that's in the Scipio ecosystem to go find 100 seats in 100 days to put into um, trial. We're going to launch this officially next week on the summer solstice, which for those of you that don't know, it's June 21st. That's the official start of summer um, here in the, uh, the Northern Hemisphere. And this just consequently runs through the end of calendar Q3. So the last day is September, which is a Friday. The, the 29th happens to, um, to be the 100 days of summer. So Ted, can you talk a little bit to everybody about how 100 seats would break down into a partner or a carrier sure. and what you might uh, take in terms of a approach? Absolutely. I'll uh, I'll pull out that math degree of mine and uh, do some slicing and dicing of uh, of the hundred seats over the summer. So really, um, um, typically what we provide is is uh, five seat uh, five seat trials, right? So with a five seat trial, right, you need to sign up uh, sign up um, twenty uh, customers to do trials, and with twenty five seat trials, you'll have you'll have your hundred seats in place, right? So yeah. that would be the expectation, and just yeah. kind of work through that. So 20, so basically it turns out to 20 customers in 100 days. Right. So think about the number of opportunities and the number of subscriptions that could generate in your pipeline if you follow through on that. And then through this program, if you participate and you're diligent about this, you're going to be able to earn additional discounts. And you can either leverage those additional discounts to um, improve your own margins and financials or you're welcome to pass those along to your customers. So the purpose is really just to enable you to build pipeline and why Ted? <laughs> <laughs> because of course trials work, right? I mean, while, while I mentioned earlier that they're not always necessary, they do show um, that that you're simple and easy to work. And, and historically, you know, when I've seen trials uh, turned on with, with good, Again, good guardrails and and clear and concise goals. They've almost been almost 100 right because again, you come in, you try, it works, right? And the customers are just like happy, right? Wow, that was easy, right? So I'm getting them to that point of that was easy, and wow, right? Yeah. I mean, the only reason they're not going to pick it is because they don't like the underlying uh, technology. Either they don't like Zoom or they don't like Microsoft. Um, right. Your portion of it will be like slick and easy for them. It will. And that's all due to the, the Scipio application. Um, we have almost a 99% success rate on trials. And it's kind of funny because usually we're done with the trial before the competition has a statement of work completed. So that in itself is, is pretty telling. So actual details of the summer program will be landing in your inbox um, next week, but mark that on your calendar first day of summer and really think about how you'll roll that out to your sales teams. We'll be working with your marketing uh, organizations to give you the collateral and really push because we're helping you to build a nice, healthy, robust uh, pipeline so that when uh, everyone's back into the fall and school starts again, that you'll have um, a really healthy, robust pipeline to just to, to start from. So I'm going to recap uh, today. So number one that I got out of today was great trials begin um, with a, a simple and easy, you know, process and plan. You know, we supply you with the application so you don't have to worry about having to do any heavy lifting there because the tools do it for you. Two is plan, 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 plan. Uh, that was probably the most used word um, on the call today. And then thirdly, to recap and, and repeat and kind of beat this to, to death is trials work. So get your customers into trials. Ted, thanks for joining me today. No and next week is the Activate session. 
So that's week four. And Activate really talks about once you have a commitment from that customer, how are you quickly going to move them from commitment on paper to utilizing the service so that you can start to see and capture that monthly recurring revenue? Our guest will be Steph Boyer. He's been around Scipio a little while. If you've worked with him, you know that he has excellent, excellent project management skills, and he's got a lot of ideas and best practices for you. So join us next week, and thanks for your time today, and uh, make it a great one. Thank you all. Appreciate it.